Lord. And we all know we can't go anywhere without the Lord, our Amen. Savior. So right now we're going to ask the man of this house, the leader Amen. of this house, Bishop McCoy, to come to the microphone yeah. to give us a song. Amen. Amen. Hey man, good morning. Good morning. Well, well, good afternoon, rather. Um, it is indeed an honor to have you all gathered here this morning for for the occasion that we all consider worthy to be um, or worthy to have our attention. Amen. Amen. Um, I grew up in Montgomery, and from hearing from the elders during the '60s and the civil rights movements, when when they felt an injustice had been done. Or that they had been wronged, they began to call mass meetings, amen. Yeah, and funny. they met at churches like Mount Zion, AME Zion Church, yeah. and Holt Street Missionary yeah. Baptist yeah. Church. Yeah. And when they came together, when they were trying to get the people on one accord, when they were trying to build um, some camaraderie among themselves to unite, they would come together and they would sing songs yeah. that would provide a basis of unity among them, That's amen. Right. Right. And they would sing songs like, I am on the battlefield for my Lord. I am on the battlefield for my Lord. If you don't mind, you can help if you want to. And I promised him that I, I would serve him till I die. I am on the battlefield for my Lord. And, and they and they really believe that. Oh yeah. They believe that they were about to go through a very difficult yeah, time of yeah, a I, battle. I, I, I. Right. And because they were determined, they would sing songs like oh, yeah. Ain't gonna let nobody turn me around. Turn me around. Turn me around. I ain't gonna let nobody turn me around. I'm gonna keep on walking. Keep on talking, walking up with freedom's highway. Amen. They would sing songs that would embolden them in the purpose that they felt they were called to. Amen. Amen. So I just want us to just um, take note today that we're all on one accord. We need to have a spirit of unity this morning. Amen. 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 And when we finish, they would say, This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Oh. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Everywhere I go, I'm gonna let it shine. Oh, everywhere I go. I'm gonna let it shine everywhere I go. I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Let it shine. Amen, amen. We have a rich heritage in this city for standing up against what we consider to be injustices. Amen. It is my sincere prayer this evening that we all come together on one accord. That we all move in the same direction. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you, Bishop. And now I would like to call William Boyd up to the microphone with Amen. his welcoming remarks. And we appreciate him Amen. for organizing this very much needed event today as a kickoff to other events to bring unity and awareness back to this city of Montgomery. Amen. And so, William the William Boyd. Yeah. William. All right, good afternoon. Good afternoon. All right, now, um, we're here for a reason. Mm -hmm. And I'm quite sure if Trayvon Martin were here, he'd get up and say, this little lighter, man. Yeah. Right. I'm quite sure if Ricky Walker was still living, he wouldn't yeah. be sitting down in the, in the pew, he'd stand yeah. up and say, this little lighter man. Say it, preacher. Yeah. I'm quite sure it's Michael Brown was here today. He wouldn't sit down in the pew when the preacher was saying, I'm quite sure he'll stand up and say, This little lighter man. Watch it, preacher. I asked, we all should stand and we're going to say, This little lighter man. And the gap 
for the one who can't stand for themselves yeah. because they laid the rest. So at this time, I'm asking y'all to stand and sing with me. This little lighter, man, like yeah. the meaning. This little light of mine. Come on, we clap it up. I'm gonna let it shine. Come on, y'all. Come on, come on. Come on. This little light of mine. Hey, Lord. I'm gonna let it shine. Come on, y'all. Little light. This little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. One more time. Hey. This is light. This little light of mine. The reason that we're here, the Bible said, well, there are two or three more joined together in that name. Yeah. That he would be there as well. Yeah. About three, four hundred people said they'll be here. Yes. Amen. But it's all right. Sometimes it only takes a faithful few Amen. to continue to move forward. Can I get a witness? Amen. We are here because the president of the United States of America made this statement. During the time of the Trey Von Martin incident, the president said that if I had a son, yeah. he too would look like Trey Von. That was the first key. The president said, if I had a son, he too would look like Trey Von. Every holder, the Attorney General of the United States of America said that there have been so many unjustified killings all over the land. Yeah, and he was yeah. calling for a federal investigation on some of this unjust killing of, of white people, shoot down black youth. All right. Yeah. Now, yeah. We are here because in 1975, well, a man by the name of Bernard Whitehurst yes. was gunned down right here in these streets of Montgomery, Alabama, That's by right. white police officers. We are here because in 2010, Come on, a man by the name of Ricky Walker That's right. was gunned down in his car had no weapon, shot over 15, 16 times. Yeah. That's why we're here. We're here because a man named Samuel Iverson yeah. was shot at least 22 times on the corner of Gould Street in West Patton in 1998. That's why we are here. We're here because Justin had not taken this course. That's why we're here. We're here to take a stand for those who have gone on the globe. Amen. But we still got work to do. We are here because the police officer refused today to get to receive indictment. Oh, well. They just can go down in the community and just shoot down black men because they in fear because they think that the black man is a fear to the white man. It's well. wrong because they got guns on their hip. That's why we are here. We are here because black and white have sadly want to join together. Yeah. It said no more. no more. It's not a black thing, but unfortunately in this situation, it just happened to be that black man is the one that's losing their lives in the hands of people that we put trust in called law enforcement. <laughs> now we have the mother of Ricky Walker. Y'all need to listen to what the mother got to say. Yeah. And then we ask the question, where do we go from here? Yeah. And hopefully before we leave, that we come up with a mission that one day that we will run the justice for those who have been laid to rest in the hand of people that we pay the salary to call law enforcement. Thank y'all. Thank you so much. And now, I would like to call to the podium for the occasion and purpose, Leonardo Norman. And he was a former Montgomery police uh, hey, officer. Man. Hey, man. So, without further ado, Mr. Norman. Major. Major Norman. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good, morning. Good afternoon, everybody. Also, as I was assigned to the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Office for about three and a half years, and then I came south and uh, I retired from MPD as a major. So I have worked and I'm quite familiar with both sides well, uh, of the fence. 
And as I looked at this press release this morning, once again, let me not be remiss in greeting everybody. When I say everybody, then I won't miss anybody's name. Everybody, Amen. thank you all for coming out. Just have a few words to say. I have my own clock, and I'm going to let you go. Uh, when I received this press release on yesterday from Ms. Karen, I decided to look it over and see a few things about the Human Rights Weekends. Hands up, don't shoot. Community police relations. There's no need for us to put our hands up. Don't shoot, no anybody. Uh, we would also like to look at the Ordinary People's Society for the Kennedy Glasgow. And I notice here that this is about solutions. In light of all things going on around the nation with the dip, uh, different grand jury verdicts, we need to build cohesion and trust within our communities and definitely within our law enforcement. Effective community uh, policing and relations and the importance of outreach efforts in ensuring effective, I said effective, neighborhood policing and community health. Issues and solutions regarding police and community relations that is not limited to any one community or race. So now let me say this about that, if you will, and my little block is going to be entitled Building Relationships. Come on now. Building Relationships. Come on, preacher. And when we look at the, the makeup of our local law enforcement, uh, we have some new things to be proud of, all of us that are taxpayers. And if we're going to do anything and be powerful, we must register and then get off of our assets and vote. Are you ready? Those are two things that we must do based on the constitutionality that we all have because we all taxpayers and we all live in this community. Amen. Our most recently, uh, Chief Deputy Elect Derek Cunningham, whom I worked with on the force. He worked for me for about five years and now uh, he has decided to embrace uh, one of my staff majors, Kevin uh, uh, Murphy. And uh, he is the chief deputy elect of Montgomery County. Come on now. He's not Kevin, and the chief is not Derek. They all have titles, and we should use those titles as respect as some of our fair weather media get on the air on the television and call him Derek. Uh, the chief executive of the city call him Derek, Kevin. They call the president uh, Barack. So all of us have names that we deserve some respect. So watch it. Watch yourselves and watch them. The occasion and purpose here as we go on, I'd just like to take us back. There are so many instances that I can't name them all, but uh, I'd like to start out with what took place in the Civil War. Come on. Back in the day, 625,000 lives lost. Then I'd like to switch over to after the Civil War when the KKK was the first organized gang in America. Come on. Out of Pulaski, Tennessee. Come then I'd like to take it back over to the Harlem Renaissance and the age of depression, they call it dog days, and look at the things that have gone on here with Nat Turner, uh, 10 uh, 02, 1800. Uh, killed by hanging in 11-11, uh, 1831. Born in Southampton, Virginia, and that's where the Constitution was framed. Come on now. In Virginia, it's a southern city for southern bells. Medgar Evans, 1969. In Decatur, Mississippi. Emmett Lewis Till, July 25th, 1941. Come on. The Jenna 6th, August 25th, 2011. Michael Brown, here, August 9, 2014. Uh, in Ferguson, Missouri, Eric Garner uh, in uh, New York, Tompkinsville, yes. New York, which is a part of Staten Island. Man give up his life because he was selling Lucy's. Well, I was right there in New York at that very time. Come on. And Lucy's are called single cigarettes. Right. And it's tough in New York to smoke come or on. anywhere else. A carton of cigarette uh, has a tax base of $5.85 per carton. Isn't that something for a man to give up his life My love. for a few loose cigarettes? Come on. Twelve-year-old Tamir uh, Rice because he was playing with the BB gun. Come on, friend. And what I'm getting at here, just get with me, uh, uh, the PBA president in New York, Pat Lynch, has now embarked upon a campaign against uh, the mayor of 
New York. And the first thing that he said that uh, he and his white wife, a uh, black wife and his black children, that has nothing to do with righteousness, no. nothing whatsoever. No. And then we can look at Montgomery. Someone mentioned Whitehurst, and it goes on and on and on. I can tell you about the Todd Road incident. That's it right. just go on and on. But our fair weather media is not depicting the fairness nor the righteousness of what's in between that should come to our community. That's right. And then the basis of the essence of what I said is about police community relations, Karen, Ms. Brown. Police community relations, I'm glad you selected that topic. Now to protect and to serve. Now let's reverse that, to serve and protect. And if you're going out of business, you should take your sign down. So therefore, uh, what we should encourage our police department to do, you advised me yesterday that you were looking for solutions, right? Our police and our sheriff, and I told uh, Chief Cunningham this, is that our police department needs sensitivity training. Come on now. They need sensitivity training ongoing, in service, year round, day in and day out, so that when they approach young blacks and young whites on the street, they will know how to approach you and how to speak to you and how to address you because every young man with his slacks hanging off his buttocks is not a criminal. Come on. And can I get some, just one and a half, amen. Amen. Just one and a half. And just because you may look a certain way, stereotyping. And this is why, now, out there in the audience, you may have a couple of spies out there. Well, that's all right, and I could care less. But from the standpoint of what's going on in our city with law enforcement, if you look around, everybody, all right, everybody brought a uh, Hyundai. But I'm going to tell you that if you pay taxes, we all Bro, brought Hyundai. Hyundai. Come on, and I'm concluding with the fact that, Mr. Boyd, as I looked around, I hadn't seen a single Korean police officer. Very few Mexican, no Greek, Armenian, uh, uh, Vietnamese, Cambodians, or Laotians. So we got to bridge this city with some training, some love, some stability, and bring the police back to the community. They pick up a salary, paycheck, bi-weekly, and run back to Emerald Mountain, Pratton, oh, Prattville, no. No, no. all of these or com surrounding counties, and they don't leave anything here. They ride through your community and won't even speak, speak to you. So we got to do something about the stranger in the mayor's office downtown. My Lord. And when it comes to that, you know how to vote, but you must register first. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I do have voter registration applications with me. I try to keep them with me at all times. So if anyone here needs a voter registration application, please see me because I have them. And you should just take at least five with you anyway to get five people registered to vote. I would like to have the Whitehurst family to please stand because I know Bernard and his brother Stacy Whitehurst are the children of the slain Bernard Whitehurst, their father. Um, it was a it was our Ferguson of 1975, so 39 years ago, um, they suffered not only a loss to them, but to this city. And I would like either Bernard or Stacey, I don't know which one of you all would like to um, give the story of what the Whitehurst case is. And if you don't know what it is and you live in the city of Montgomery, Google it. We have Google now, but you're going to hear it live. But Look into it and make sure that you keep abreast of what's going on. Hi everyone, my name is Stacy Whitehurst. Um, back in 75, my father was on his way to visit someone. And in the course of that, he uh, noticed that something was going on. And at that time, he was the type of person that was afraid of someone with a uniform. Well. And he began to, um, I would say, take off running. And because of that, 
it cost him his life. Well, wow. uh, at that time, uh, a store had got robbed, and he was in the same era where the store had got robbed, and he was misidentified as the suspect because he was jogging or running. Because of that, um, the po the police department tried to cover up their wrongdoing, meaning that they um, lied on a police report and said that he was shot in the stomach. Uh -huh. And we had to have a, an autopsy done and found out that he was shot multiple times in the back. Well, well. At that time, not only just that, um, he was begging for his life and it's kind of hard for me to even talk about it, but take your time, take time, your time. He was begging for his life and they lied about everything that had happened. And here's a black man, you know, not dealing with the wrong concept of what was going on at that time, but he was just trying to get to a safe place at that time because back then it was a lot of things that was going on that was hidden from the public dealing with the police force and because of that he was trying to get to a safe place and after they shot him multiple times in the back they took his body and had it embalmed without our permission even to this day no one called and apologized to my mother you know, it says, you know, in the word that uh, a child, a family, a man is a head of his house. Well, to this it says that a black man has a chance of going to jail because he's not raised by his father. His father's not in the home. Um, I would say that we had a rough time coming up, but we are still here. Well, I am able to stand before you now and declare that God has a way of answering things. And I would like to say this here in my closing because really and truly I was not prepared to speak today. But I would like to say that when I think about all that we've been through in our lives, it reflects me back to the Old Testament when it comes to Psalms chapter 3 verse number six where it says i would not be afraid of ten thousand of people that have set themselves against me round about meaning that i would not be afraid to declare the truth i would not be afraid to tell the people what is right i would not be afraid to march for justice this is not a black and white thing this is about truth this is about standing up for righteousness. You know, I heard them say that, you know, they don't want to open up a can of worms, but in, deep in my spirit, we are not opening up a can of worms. We are opening up a can of righteousness. And opening up a can of righteousness would bring justice to all that was done wrong, dealing with police brutality, anything that, that was done wrong. God has a way of answering things, and all we have to do is just stand up and declare Open up a can of righteousness. Well, thank you so much. And I would be remiss if I, uh, if I don't um, point out some people in the audience like Representative Thad McClammy, who's our state representative, uh, Alicia Brooks from Southern Poverty Law Center, Norman Hurst, who's an attorney, and is there another attorney in the house who would be able to answer questions later on? I know attorney Charles James was gonna send someone. But at any rate, I would just like for you all to um, look around you. And if you feel uncomfortable, that's what we're here for. Because if you feel comfortable, you're complacent with everything. So you should feel uncomfortable. Until we get enough justice for everybody to feel comfortable. Everybody should feel uncomfortable. All right. So now, William Boyd, please bring up the Okay, this, we're gonna bring up the uh, 
someone from the Walker family, please take the prayer. And this is what we're going to do. We're going to hear from y'all, too. We're not going to be up for long, but we got to leave here with a mission. We just can't come and just to meet. I got some plans. I hope y'all have some ideas, but we're going to ask the media to leave because we don't want them to go out and tell everybody the plan before we initiate the plan. <laughs> so we have an attorney here because Martin Luther King said sometime. Sometime. So we, somebody may have to go to jail. Uh -huh. <laughs> y'all looking crazy now. <laughs> but I bet some people here willing to go to jail. Mm -hmm. But let me get the Walker family. See, but we don't want the media to get it out just yet. So we're gonna talk about some strategy. I have something, no Karen has something, no Clement may have something. We got an attorney here, I'm quite sure y'all have a boy, Ms. Walker, no. uh, somebody from the Walker family. Come tell your story, Amen. because Amen. I was there. Y'all y'all give it up for me. I'm quite sure everybody have a story. Everybody have a story. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. And praise God. Praise God. Well, my story is, I would have never thought this would have been my story. Yeah, yeah. It was always everybody else's story. Well. But on April the 25th, 19, 2010, That's right. at 635, it became my story. Yeah. My son was shot down. They mm. shot him 18 times. Oh, my Lord. Because he walked away from a work site. That he had been in jail for tickets mm -hmm. for nine thousand dollars. My lord. My son's life was worth nine thousand dollars that well, night. Take your time, sir. Because he was in a car, they had him surrounded. He, he had he couldn't go anywhere. My lord. He was surrounded. Mm -hmm. But my story that they told me that he was trying to run the police car over. But from my understanding, he was already wedged in. Yeah. He couldn't go anywhere. That's right, that's right, that's right. So they opened fire 18 times. Wow. The night that I got there, the police officer told me, oh, it didn't matter because he was a suspect. Mm. My son life didn't matter that Jeez. night. That night but it matters to me. Amen. My son would have been 41 years old. Tell me the second. I celebrated his birthday. My I Lord. celebrated his death at the same time. Mm. Lord. At the time I received this child that God weaved and wove inside of me, that he saw everything in him, nobody would have told me that I would have buried my son. My son was supposed to bury me. My, Amen. Jesus. my son had just gotten married. He was looking for a future. Jesus. But he didn't get that future. Amen. And what they did to my son was uncalled for. Nobody came to me and said, well, we're sorry Jesus. that it happened this way. Mm. But they didn't care. And I got four more grandchildren at home. That is a Ricky Walker. Amen. I just had a great grandbaby that is a Ricky Walker. Amen. Yeah. I look at my son, my my 22 year old grandson. I told him if he ever be pulled over by police, roll down every window in your car, put your hands on the steering wheel, and turn on your dome light and turn on your cell phone so everything can be recorded. This is the kind of life our teenagers have to live today. Our teenagers not free to do anything. We have to record. We have to have witness, and sometimes still that don't work. Amen. It's a time to put aside all of this. We need to come together as a community, Amen. as people in faith, yes. and we need to hit our needs. That's the most important thing is praying and being together on things. But we as people, we want to pull apart. When my son died, I heard every story in the world. He deserved it because he was in prison. We all make mistakes, Amen. but it don't justify our Amen. life. Amen. Amen. That's right. We all need to pull against, I mean, pull together with each other to bring up a, a change to the community. Because yeah, there's right. too many things that's going on with our teenagers. Wow. And like I said, I have four other grandchildren, and I just <coughs> had a great grandbaby. And I look at them and say, "Is I'm going to bury you." Well. Wow. I look at that when my grandbaby, when my great grandbaby was born, I cried 
people they understand why I cry because if I had a choice, he wouldn't be here. Well, not because I don't love him, not because I don't want him, because of the world we live in today. I have to see. I have to be on pins and needles every day. Is somebody gonna call me and say somebody done shot one of my grandsons? Well, yeah. Is some, somebody done shot my great grandbaby? My lord. It's just a fear. It's a fear for me. And I just hope we can just do something to just solve the problem. I can't solve the problem. I don't even know where to go to solve the problem, but as a community, we can solve this problem. Amen. Thank y'all so much. And I'm going to have to bring up one person, and then I'm going to turn the mic back over to Karen Jones. But this man has been a part of everything in the community. Election season is over. After election season, this man has been a part. Matter of fact, he, he even stood with the, with your family. This represented Dan McClain, and I be with him. He must come up here. We give him a couple minutes to say something because he's here. We have other black elected officials. They don't mean us no good. I said no good. The president had to come y'all did, so he all over. Come on, yeah, get up for us. That's right, get up for us. He is a part of us. He may be a little light, a little bright, but he all right. This is recording. Before we leave, you was playing a song I just already started before I came in. Was the, I think we called it the mountaintop speech that Dr. Mm -hmm. King made. Right. Did, did they play the part that he was talking about unity in that speech? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Y'all did play that part? Yes. Okay. Before we leave, I'd like for you to play it again. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I just left a meeting uh, with the. Uh, the YMCA at 11 o'clock, and there was a gentleman there that said when he was three years old that his father, well, I forget what street it was, it was some street downtown. This was before 1955. This was before the bus boycott. But anyway, he said his, that his father was attempted to board the bus. I think he got in the wrong door or something. And in fact, I wasn't even familiar with it because I'm not, you know, from Montgomery, and it was before my time of coming here. But anyway, he said that before Mrs. Parks was arrested, That's his right. father, what's his name? Uh, you, uh, you probably know him right now. Story, yeah. yeah, you know, his son, you know, he said he was three years old when this happened, okay. that um, he was shot by the police on one of the streets downtown. Yeah. I, like I said, I, I missed that. Um, the thing that bothers me the most, everybody talks about what, how do you control the police? <laughs> My Lord. How you doing, Representative? Yeah. Now, I, I raised a question on, I'm on the radio That's on, right. on the Fridays from 12 to 1. I, I raised a question yesterday and last Friday, right. Friday before that. And I raised a question, have you ever seen a position on a ballot to say that you were voting for a police chief or a police or anything else. Says, right. Has anybody ever voted for a police chief? All right, come on now. Our police. No, sir. We need to. <laughs> That's right. I see this coming. Come on now. Y'all here now. Uh, you know, what's just strange to me, you know, even in Ferguson, I don't think I remember seeing, I think maybe one person from the city council said something at some point. You know, I, I don't remember a city council person in Ferguson saying anything about what happened. I don't believe I've ever seen the mayor of Ferguson, period. All right. Um, the point where I'm going with this is the police do not hire themselves. Thank you. The police is an employee of a municipality. Okay. They're not somebody that have something, some supernatural, supernatural power and control over the community. 
But the thing, and even here in Montgomery, Mrs. Walker, you mentioned something that those of you that was in District 76 in this last election, you probably got a piece of mail from me about every week. Okay. We was talking about debtors' prisons. Yeah. We was talking about the situation that led up to the death of your son. And that was $9,000 worth of traffic tickets in the city of Montgomery. $9,000. That sounds like a bill you get from RS. $9,000 worth of traffic tickets in Montgomery, Alabama. And I think that was in 2010, 2013. The city of Montgomery wrote $16 million right. worth of traffic tickets in this city. $16 million. Birmingham wrote less than $2 million. Mobile wrote about a million and a half. Some ain't right. Huntsville wrote about a million. We wrote $16 million. They said the police wrote them. And no police got up no morning and decided that they were going to the streets of Montgomery and write $16 million. Corruption. The commitment that I made in 2014 that we were going to get rid of a company that was called Justice uh, Juvenile, not Juvenile, Justice, some kind of justice company that we were paying to collect tickets, Ms. Fane. And they are gone, I'm pleased to report that. They amen, are gone. amen. Yeah. That type of thing, but we're not finished with that yet. But the point that I'm making is basically, and I don't care who out there, okay, what's the media, who out there, it's, uh, that the solution, or one of the solutions that we have at hand is nothing new. In fact, we'll be celebrating it next year, the 50 year anniversary of the Voters' Rights Bill. And uh, right now we're doing the same thing 49 years later than we were doing back in 1965. I was here in 65, so I know what happened in 65. Um, unfortunately, not only the value of the ballot has been devalued because the respect for it is, is of such that of all the lies that were given, I think in the primary, we had somewhere less than 20% showed up that was voted. I have 26,000 individuals in House District 76 that are registered voters, 26,000. In the whole primary in District 76, less than 3,000 people off the 26,000, about 3,000, a little more than that. Less than 3,500 people out of 26,000 people in District 76 respected the ballot enough to get out and participate in the primary. In Ferguson, in Ferguson, Missouri, the population is almost 70% African-American. That's right, that's right. 6% of those people own it. And I'm going to sit down. You say, well, what is the solution? We have a solution. The solution is very simple. I choose to call it ballots over bullets. Yes, ballots over bullets. Amen. You know, we're not going to shoot our way out of this. Well, mm -hmm. But at the same time, the same thing that put me in office. And then a bullet put me in office. Yeah. The ballot put me in office. Well, the same thing that put the president, President Obama, in office. It wasn't no bullets. It was a what? Well, it was the ballot. The ballot doesn't say where you have to live unless you're in the penitentiary that you can register to vote and vote. And the thing that will stop some of these things that's happening in Ferguson, the things that are happening in Montgomery, Alabama, it's already there. We don't have to go out and find it. We don't have to go enroll in a class. Well, we don't have to move into another city because every city you move in has the same problem. The people that have to be held accountable for the actions of the police are those that employ them. Yes. Of all these things that we talked about, other than the mayor problem, I was sitting out during the election time. I don't remember one person got and said, "Well, you know, we got a problem here. You know, we got a problem that." You know, we don't need, nobody needs to be on 9,000 tickets, 1,000 worth of tickets. 
the police shouldn't be doing this or that. The people that are responsible for the action of the police department is the city of Montgomery. Period. The day that the attitude and the commitment of this city says that if you fail to treat all citizens equal in the city of Montgomery, you can start looking for your job in Elmo County, uh, Calgary County, someplace. The only thing I'm saying is that we have the solution in our hands. There's two of them. Number one, if you're not registered, you need to register to vote yesterday. If you are registered, then you need to make a new commitment that you will vote in every election regardless of what it is and that you should also make sure that all of the people that you love around you, that you will see that they go. And I would assure you, if you vote in the next three elections in the city of Montgomery, if you vote yourself and ensure that the problems that we're talking about today, all of them won't be gone, but most of them will be. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you so much, Representative Thad McClammy, District 76, our community representative. And I want to call, and I want to call William Boyd um, back up for a moment. Uh, we have some breaking news. No, ain't, ain't no breaking news, but it just says, see, that's the reason we had the meeting in a building. You know, the building surrounded by police. You know, that just scare tactic. We ain't, you know, we ain't, we ain't, we ain't need no permit. See, we was in the street, we need a permit, see. Maybe, maybe we going to the street, but they all around the building. I just got a phone call. Yeah, they all out there. I went out there and took a picture. But that's intimidation. We out here having a peaceful gathering in a church. They could be out there trying to solve some crime, but they are here. You see what I'm saying? They are here. But Miss Fan, we see you. And a turn, we do have a lawyer in the house, and hopefully he can give us some legal advice at the end on what we need to do to turn this thing around. So at this time, Karen, we better go to the... Yeah. Uh, we'll open it up. We ask the media. They, they, can, they can go for that. Well, we'll... <laughs> we'll um, We'll let you all know about the um, panel discussion in which we want to basically come together for real solutions and where do we go from here. And um, this is a serious issue of where do we go from here. Real solutions. And I, I have to ask this question of non-African American people here, because we have, um, I see different uh, races. How many mothers, white mothers, are here? Raise your hand. Well, if you were born, you have a mother, raise your hand. Like, okay. um, I would like to ask the question, how many of you were told how to act or react if stopped by a police? or your brothers? Your mother ever had that conversation with you? Somebody in the back had to hang up. In the hallway. Kind of, sort of. Come on in here, kind of, sort of. Yeah. <laughs> and what is, may I ask your ethnicity? Um, I'm South Asian, my parents are from India. Okay. okay. So, we, and, and you're brown, so you fall in the same category as African Americans. <laughs> but um, as far as white individuals, I want you to understand what it is when our black mothers have to sit and, and talk to their sons, primarily their sons, about how to react or act when a policeman stops them because black mothers want their babies to come home. Well, Your black fathers, because they've been through it, they talk to their sons usually, and I can say they attest to this because I have seven brothers. Okay. Daddy just said, look them in their eye, get their badge number, be respectful, let them respect you and come home. But we not kowtowing, we not doing all that extra. 
we'll worry about it later. So what I'm saying, if you got to die by some, you die by something that matters. You don't die about not showing somebody respect if they don't show respect to you. And that, com and that goes both ways. And we're not here attacking law enforcement officers because we do have some great ones. Amen. But I just want that you to understand the cultural impact of what happens between black women wanting their boys to come home and what that causes a distinction in the household when you got a strong black man who says whether he lives or dies, we're not going to just do kowtow down. You know, die for something is all I was raised. If you got to die, die for something. You know the Lord, you know you got to die anyway. Amen. What I was told. But die for something. And so now, we're going to open the floor up. And we're going to have some conversations. You ask questions and something... When I saw Chief Kevin Murphy, former Chief Kevin Murphy, one thing that he did, he bridged the gap between the community and the police. He did that. And since he left, we see that the bridge is broken. Amen. I go to the school too much about our black boys, especially special needs black boys, and the criminalization of our black boys in these schools. When you have security guards and policemen all around, they don't say good morning. Put your backpack up there. Come through the metal detector. You don't look at them right. They get upset with the kids. They handcuff and arrest them, beat them. That's what goes on in Montgomery Public Schools. Oh, no. And you wonder why you see our black teenagers walk around looking angry. They suspend them because they don't have on solid black or solid white shoes. The school to prison pipeline for black children. It's like they're giving them a Amtrak ticket straight to prison. They're getting them ready for that prison mentality. Uniforms, I can't stand it. I can't stand it. You, you want to suspend a child for the color of their socks and color of their shoes? That's craziness to me. But that's why we need you at city council meetings, school board meetings and especially at the voting booths and polls. Right now, are we gonna, in the words of Martin Luther King, have chaos or community? Hey, y'all, Kevin, come on in. Come on in. Y'all come on up front. Y'all come on, get in the hall, come up front. Hey, just, uh, there's lots of room. Yeah, lots of room. Y'all come on up. Give everybody to slide down yeah. a little bit. Jimmy, give, give, a little, give us a little air, a lot of people Jack, fans, man. bring me my bag. bag. Jack, you can put it down. Alright, yes. Yes. Don't watch it stand. We got seats in the back. Come on on the front row. The front row is not off limit. Okay, and I see Mr. Springs has made it. He was on um, the agenda. He has an organization that has come out, Save Black Boys. And um, I want you to briefly, in two minutes before we... Uh, Let's, let's, let's get, he late, I'm sorry. Let's go to the people now, man. I know, I know, I know, we, I know but let's go to the people now. They've been waiting, they got something to say. Okay, but do y'all have questions right now? Um, and then when we get to our strategy and commitment, we're gonna ask, humbly, uh, respectfully ask the media to step away, we'll get to the um, part in which we ask him for commitment to the cause. So right now, any questions going on in your mind that you have, white people, Ask your questions. How you feeling? What you? I mean, cause you know, I don't want you to leave here not understanding what's going on. And no matter how you think it may seem uh, ignorant, because we all are ignorant to some degree until we learn. I didn't say stupid. I said ignorant. That means you don't know. So, um, and black people ask questions. Um, my name is Cheryl Peel, and Karen doesn't realize it, but she invited me today. <laughs> I'm also a special ed teacher, okay. but I'm also a lay minister for the Unitarian Universalist Church. And um, I'm one of the um, founders of um, Montgomery Watch Montgomery, Homicide Watch Montgomery. And the question I have is, I've been tracking all the homicides in Montgomery for the last year.